India is the birthplace of language, mathematics, religion, and it's the cradle of the human race. All roads lead to India. Sanskrit is the mother of all the world's oldest living languages. NASA scientists declare that Sanskrit is the most pure of all the world's languages. Sanskrit is the sacred language of ancient pre-Brahmin Hinduism, and it's also the source of European languages and even English. Contrary to what Western scholars and archaeologists claim, India is the cradle of mankind, and it's from India the geography of the planet was first explored and settled by. The Mayans, the Aztecs, the Egyptians, the Phoenicians, aboriginals called Indians, do, all have their origin in India. The ancient world was once ruled by India and that's a provable fact. An in-depth presentation of this study can be found on my blog in 55 chapters. This will be a mere breakdown of the most important keys that unlocks the true origin of Judaism and Christianity and clears the fog as to the real origins of world history being withheld by the rulers who are shaping our matrix through deception. They do not want you to know what I'm about to present because your mind will be less apt to be controlled by them within their propaganda matrix. Knowledge is power in its knowledge that breaks the chains over men's minds and takes them out of the cages of other men. In Hinduism, the goddess Kali is the consort or wife of the Hindu deity Shiva. Temples to Kali can be found in Mexico, South America, and place names in North America such as California. The Mesoamerican Southwest of the United States is riddled with location names honoring the Hindu goddess Kali. Temples such as Teocali in Mexico and cities such as Caliquin are named after the Hindu goddess Kali. The name Kali is used for Israel in Hebrew such as Kal Israel which means all Israel. The name Kali can be found in Islam such as in the name Caliphate. Maya is a goddess consort of Shiva in Hinduism. The Mayans are named after this Hindu goddess. Kundalini is a well-known Hindu name and Kundalini is a South American agricultural goddess of the Aztecs. Aboriginals in North and South America are referred to as Indians and the identification with India obvious. In Egypt, the Sphinx at Giza is the effigy of Simha the man-lion incarnation of Vishnu in Hinduism. The Hindu god Shiva was worshipped in Egypt as the god Seb or Geb. The name Seb is a shortened form of Seba, Saba and Shiva which are all names for Shiva. The stele, pillars and pyramids which mark the Giza plateau are called Matzabah in Hebrew. The cognate for the name Shiva is found in the word Matzabah. The Old Testament scriptures is filled with Sanskrit names to Hindu deities. The earliest patriarchs of the Old Testament named people and places after Hindu deities. The goddess Asura in Hinduism becomes the consort of Yahweh in the Old Testament as Asherah. Brahma is a Hindu god whose name is found all over the Old Testament. Hebrew names such as Bala, Uma, Asher, Issa, Hosea, Hera, Baal, Adonai, El Shaddai, Jehovah, Nisan, Sabbath, Moses, Sela, etc. are all Sanskrit names relating to Hindu gods. In Judaism, one goes to a yeshiva, which is an academy or school to learn Judaism, with the Hindu god Shiva obvious in the name. The Jewish ritual for the deceased is called a shiva, which is a seven-day mourning for the deceased that's referred to as sitting Shiva. The word for the number seven in the Old Testament is the Sanskrit Hindu god name for Shiva. In the ancient world, Shiva was known as the Lord of Seven, or rather, sevening oneself. In the Bible, the Sabbath is named after Shiva, who is Lord of Sabaoth. Shiva is also known as the destroyer in Hinduism. 
In the Old Testament, God as destroyer passes over Egypt during the Exodus. In both Testaments of the Bible, God has seven spirits which relate to the seven chakras in the Shivite yogic system, as Shiva is Lord of Yoga in Hinduism. The name Kanan or Kena is Sanskrit and from Hinduism. Chanan or Kanan or Chana are Tamil Hindu names for the Hindu god Krishna. The Promised Land of the Hebrews is a park preserve promised to the followers of pre-Brahman vegan Shivites or rather Indian Hindus who conquered and ruled the world way before there was Mesopotamian empires. Canaan or Chanan as a promised land is designated by two important items in Hinduism, milk and honey. In approximately 1900 BC, a flood submerged a large portion of India as described by the explorer Strabo. Strabo noted that entire villages, towns and cities were abandoned just prior to this flood. This flood changed geographical features in India, such as the disappearance of a major river in the Harappan area called the Saraswati. Those who fled immigrated west into the Levant into the promised land of the Shivites called Cana or Chanan, where brethren precursors had already immigrated and established the Brahmanite Empire of Phoenicia on the west of Cana. The Phoenicians are Indians from India. The Saraswati River was deified after this flood as a goddess who became the consort of the god Brahma. The figures of Brahma and Saraswati are found in the Old Testament as Abraham and Sarai. As in Hindu mythology, Brahma and Saraswati are brother and sister and husband and wife, just as Abraham and Sarai are in the Old Testament. Abram, or rather a Brahmin, came from the kingdom of Ud, or rather the Hodus in India. The etymology for the word Exodus in the Old Testament is ex Hodus. Hodus in ancient Hebrew is Hindustan. The original Jews named themselves after Hindustan or rather India. The word Hodus has the roots Hud and Hod, which is in the names Judea and Judah. During the ex Hodus of the Hindus from the kingdom of Ud in northern India. The deity in the Bible commands a consecration upon the arms and foreheads of the migrants. The marking upon the forehead is a Hindu bindi. The word frontlets in Hebrew means to bind, the same as the meaning for the bindi in Hinduism. The Hindu bindi later on becomes the teflon worn by Pharisee rabbis and priests in Judaism. Most everything in the Bible comes from the east, and that's because India lays east of Chanan, or rather Canaan. In Sanskrit, a hermitage is called a Vatica. In Rome, there is the Vatican. The Shiva Lingam in Shivite Hinduism is erected as architecture in Vatican City, complete with Matsuba, or rather the phallus of Shiva. The word scarlet in the Bible comes from the Sanskrit Hindu name Shani, and Shani is the god Saturn in Hinduism. The Hebrew word for sea in the Old Testament is Yam, and Yam is the Hindu god of death representing Pluto. Other names relating to Catholicism in Sanskrit are easily identifiable when cross-compared in Latin and English. The Gospel of John was written no earlier than 70 AD. However, the first verse in that gospel was written 3,000 years prior, as it's a verbatim quote directly from the Rig Vedas. Like Christianity and Judaism, Islam is also origined in Vedic Hinduism. In fact, all ancient churches, mosques, and mausoleums such as St. Paul's in London, St. Peter's in Rome, the Dome on the Rock in Al-Aqsa in Jerusalem, the Kaaba in Mecca, etc., etc., are all captured in converted erstwhile Vedic temples as their architecture clearly shows. Allah in Islam is Lord of the Seven Worlds or Heavens, and that epithet is distinctly used for the Hindu god Shiva. 
The Kaaba at Mecca encloses a Shiva lingam that is kissed by those who visit Mecca on their Hajj pilgrimage. The black stone that fell from heaven is broken in seven pieces, identifying the Hindu god Shiva, who is lord of seven. The city of Rome in Italy is in fact the city of Rama, and Rama is a Hindu deity. Catholicism is no less than another incarnation of Vedic Hinduism in every way. The Roman Caesar, the German Kaiser, and the Russian Tsar are all variations of the Sanskrit term Aswar, meaning the Great Lord. The British coronation chair has gold lions adorning its four legs in keeping with the Vedic Simhasan, i.e. the lion seat tradition. In the shelf underneath the royal seat of that chair is a sacred orange-colored stone called the Stone of Scone. The tunic of Great Britain's royal bodyguard is also of the Vedic bright orange hue. Statues of dead royalty and other elite in Westminster Abbey, London, may be seen by the score with their palms joined in homage at death in the Vedic tradition. In the museum in Corinth, Greece is a large temple mosaic of Lord Krishna, hung for display, depicting him playing a flute standing under a tree with feet crossed and with cows grazing nearby. The Bible states that Ishmael, son of Hagar, and his descendants lived in India. India is called Havila in the Bible. It must be noted that the names of Isaac and Ishmael are derivatives from Sanskrit. Hebrew Ishak equals Sanskrit Ishaku equals friend of Shiva. Hebrew Ishmael equals Sanskrit Ishmahal equals great Shiva. Bible students will note that Abraham came from Ur of the Chaldees. Western historicists have perverted the truth of actual origins of places and names when it comes to theist texts like the Bible. Bactria, a region of ancient Afghanistan, was the locality of the prototypical Jewish nation called Jahuda or Jaguda, also called Ur Jaguda. Ur meant place or town. Chaldean, more correctly called Diva or Holy Calls, was not the name of specific ethnicity, but the title of an ancient Hindu Brahmanical priestly caste who lived in what are now Afghanistan, Pakistan, in the Indian state of Kashmir. The city of Ur, land of the patriarchs, was near the border of Persia, the road to India, where the Brahmin had been born. A Brahmin made his home amongst the Sabians in Haran. Hera is a word that denotes Shiva, the destroyer. The word Hera refers to destruction in all its Hebrew applications, an epithet of Shiva. Hari, a cognate of Hera, is Hebrew that means to conceive or be pregnant, and it's the epithet used by those in Hinduism to denote the god Krishna, as in Hari Krishna. In the book of Daniel, chapter 10, Daniel has a vision of a man wearing a linen cloth designated as the Lord. Daniel distinctly claims that the man's body was the color of beryl. Beryl is a blue aquamarine mineral gemstone. Daniel is relating the Lord's body as blue in color just as the Hindu god Shiva is depicted as blue in color. This is compounded throughout the OT with the Lord's body being related to the color of blue of a sapphire in Song of Songs. In the book of Exodus, the pavement under the Lord's feet is sapphire. In Ezekiel, the throne of God is the color of sapphire, or rather blue. In Numbers, God tells Moses to command the people to create a fringe of blue on their garments so that when they look at it, they recall the commandments of the Lord. Blue is the color of the Hindu god Shiva because the god of the Hebrews, Jews, is in fact the Hindu god Shiva. Even the Israeli flag of the modern nation-state is blue after Shiva. The word Krishna in Sanskrit is Krishna, which means anointed one. Krishna equals Krishna, and Krishna equals Christ, which means anointed one. The word Niti in Sanskrit means a guide or law to follow. Krishna plus Niti 
plus following the law of Krishna and put together its Christianity, or rather following the law of Krishna, the Hindu god son of Brahma. The name Christ is still used throughout major parts of India to invoke the name of Krishna. The Greek name for Jesus is Iesus, and Yesu is still used throughout India for the name Jesus. In Phoenician, it's Aiyud, and the Ud cognate refers to the kingdom that Brahman was born and came from, which is the kingdom of Ud in northern India, or rather Hindustan, as Krishna or Aiyud was born by Brahman. The early church fathers knew their religion was not new, but very old and readily admitted it. Prior to 312 AD, the papacy in Rome used to be a Vedic priesthood. The Vatican in Rome today sits upon the ruins of ancient Vedic edifices. The Vedic priest of the Vatica, or Hermitage, in Rome was murdered by Constantine after 312 AD. The shivlings the Vedic pontiff wore before being slain by Constantine are on display in the Etruscan Museum in the Vatican. The name Constantine is in fact a Vedic name for the demon king Constantian, who tried to kill Lord Krishna in the Vedas. The Sanskrit Papa, or rather the Pope's directive, is known as a bull, or Papa bull, and that's because the dispatch rider of Shiva's directives is the bull Nandi in Hinduism. Primal Vedicism is found around the planet with nowhere being untouched. The term Soviet is Sanskrit, which is Svet. The term Bolshevik is Sanskrit, which is Balsevik, signifying Russies, who are sages. Communist is a Sanskrit term, which is Samuha Nishta. Townships ending with the cognate Grad, such as Leningrad and Stalingrad, come from the Sanskrit Gram, which means township. 2,000 miles east of Moscow in Siberia is the city of Krasnoyarsk, which is named after the Vedic god Krishna. The Caspian Sea is named after the progenitor of the Vedic Rushis. Russians use the word Agon for a fire, and this is named after the Sanskrit Agni. The Russian name Andropov comes from the Sanskrit Indra, who is the Vedic Lord of Gods. St. Paul's Cathedral in London was originally a Vedic Gopal, or rather Krishna temple. The main altar does not enshrine Jesus Christ, but the eight directional Vedic cross or star of the Vedic god Lakshmi. In front of the altar is a statue of an eagle, and the eagle is the Mount of Krishna. Overhead on the curved rafter leads supporting the ceiling are Latin prayers beginning with the Vedic incantation, Om, painted in bold block capitals. Along the walls inside are sketched in bold relief, sages and others taking a holy dip in the river Ganges. They look like cities that have been submerged for a very long time, at a time when mainstream archaeology tells us that we're no cities uh, anywhere in the world. Powerful cross currents made it nearly impossible to dive the 170 feet to the bottom. Still, scientists retrieved dozens of artifacts, including wood and pottery shards. Some of the dates on some of the human artifacts that were brought up extended as far back as 32,000 years. But the oceanographers concluded that the area had been covered by water about 9,000 years ago. So this city had apparently existed from 32,000 to about 9,000 years ago. Mainstream scholars today claim that ancient Indian civilization only goes back four or 5,000 years. Yet Hindu scholars themselves say that Hindu civilization is going back uh, many tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands of years. Might the ruins below the Gulf of Combat prove the Hindu scholars right? Another recent discovery may support their claims. 200 miles to the northwest lies the modern city of Dwarka. Archaeologists digging deep under the city found signs of a settlement once inundated by the sea. Inspired by this clue, they began searching for more ruins in waters just off the coast. 
in only 70 feet of water. Divers discovered sandstone walls, cobblestone streets, and evidence of a prosperous seaport. Scholars declared these ruins to be the remains of the ancient and legendary city of Dwarka. Ancient Hindu texts explain that the legendary city of Dwarka was said to be the dwelling place of Lord Krishna, a deity worshipped across many traditions of Hinduism. The Stonehenge is one of the most important archaeological sites of pre-Christian England. The Druids of Europe were Brahmani, or rather Vedic priests. Stonehenge is the Sanskrit Stavankund, which means meditational bower. Canterbury in England is Sankarpuri in Sanskrit, which means township of Shiva. There was no Aryan invasion of India because there's no such thing as an Aryan race. Arya is Sanskrit, which means way of life of the Hindu. Aryans and Dravidians are not races, but brothers in Vedicism, as Tamils are to the Indians. Canada in North America, a member of the British Commonwealth, is named after Chanan, or rather Kanan, the Tamil Hindu name for Krishna. It's also the name of a Dravidian language. In Japan, its ancient culture is known as Shinto. Shinto is the malpronunciation of the Sanskrit Sintu of the Indus region in India, and Nipponese, a word for the Japanese, is from the Sanskrit Nippon, which means skillful. Australia is Vedic, for the name comes from the Sanskrit Astraleya, which means land of missiles. Due to the pervasive Leonid yearly meteor showers that turn Astraleya's night skies aglow, and the Leonids emanating from the constellation Leo, refers in Vedic astrology also to Simha, who is the line man emanation of Krishna in Hinduism. The word Hebrew is of two syllables, he and brew. The syllable he is from Hari, the divine name of Krishna, and bru, which is Sanskrit for speech. Thus, Hebrew means Krishna's speech. Jerusalem is Yedu Isha Leya, which means temple and township of Krishna. Zionism is the Sanskrit word Devanism, which means the cult of God or the divine group. Jews claim they are the chosen people as this is the tradition of the Yedu clan of Lord Krishna, who are called Yadavas. The Yadu clan or the Yadavas come from southern India and the Uds or Hodus are of northern India. Just as Judah is the self-kingdom in Ishralayam, and the Uds or Hodus are of the northern kingdom of Israel, or rather Israel. Jerusalem or township of Shiva got its name because it sprung up around the Dome of the Rock, the octagonal temple of Lord Krishna. Melchizedek was the king of Jerusalem who possessed secret mystical powers. He was also Abraham's teacher Melik Sena was a great Indian prince endowed with mystical powers, the son of a Kassite king. In Kashmirian Sanskrit, Sadik is a person with magical supernatural powers. A certain Zadok was also a supernaturally endowed priest who anointed King Solomon. The name Ja or Ya is Sanskrit. Ja is a name of both Shiva and Krishna among ancient Hindus. The word Ja meaning God in Hebrew and a word which is used in innumerable names in the Old Testament in Sanskrit refers to Sathana, an attribute of God in general meaning everlasting or continued existence. It is an attribute of Shiva in particular, who is also known as Sethenu. Ja also refers to Simha, the man lion incarnation of Krishna. In the Old Testament, 
God speaks out of a pillar of fire to Moses. The god Shiva speaks out of a fire to Brahma and Vishnu in the Lingam Purana. Simhat Torah, which is a Jewish holiday, is named after Simha, the Lion Man incarnation of Krishna, and is the source of the term Lion of Judah. The Star of David and Solomon's Seal, which represents the union of spirit and matter, is the configuration of the Hindu god Indra's thunderbolt. The pool in Jerusalem in the New Testament called Bethesda is Beth Sada, or rather House of Shiva. The town called Bethlehem, where Yesu Chrisen, or rather Jesus Christ was born, is Beth Lechem, or rather House of Bread, or Lakshmi, the god of fortune and a maid of Krishna in Hinduism. The Hindu goddess of fortune Lakshmi is in the Old Testament relating to feasting and food, especially bread. Shavut of the Jews is named after Shiva, which is also the Christian Pentecost. Tongues of fire is related to the god Shiva in Hinduism. Bathsheba wife of King David in the Old Testament is daughter of Shiva in Sanskrit. Beersheba, the well Isaac's servants named in the Old Testament is the well of Shiva in Sanskrit, or rather the well of seven. The name Illuminati is claimed to be of Latin origin, which is utterly rubbish. The Illuminati have been around for thousands of years, not a mere few hundred. The word Illuminati is Sanskrit, which breaks up into two prefixes. Illu, which means gods, and the Sanskrit Manati, which means prayer, and the number three. The meaning of Illuminati is Pabuda, which means awakening. The cognate Illu is found in Sumerian and Hebrew, as in Elohim. This is the Indian Hindu caste system. And this is the modern day global caste system everyone is under. Both are the exact same, and it's the Brahmanite Hodus or Uds from India who changed the image of the sacred cow in Hinduism into the image of the golden calf of the Brahmanite Illuminati, who retook Chanan or Canaan, called Phoenicia in Ishwaralaya, or rather Israel, in 1948, that sitting at the top of the global caste system as the all-seeing third eye of Shiva, the destroyer, so tell me, conspiratars, who is running the show now, seeing how everything is connected to Vedicism around the globe, including all languages, all names, most all countries and nations, antiquity, and all religions? <laughs>
My name is Cullen Smith. This is Lifting the Veil. You can find all of my full books, presentations, videos, films, articles, posts at subscribestar.com slash lifting the veil. Patreon has suspended this work and my account and income stream for this content. So if you are a supporting patron, then please, I ask you to move your support over to subscribestar.com slash lifting the veil. And I have just established a completely free uncensored, totally free speech social media platform that replaces Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, every other platform all in one on liftingtheveil.locals.com. You can download the Locals app and you can join our group and have totally free speech and totally uncensored, unrestricted content access. And um, there are, is also a ton of exclusive content, and I will leave the cited reference links in the description down below. So you can check that out for all of my full content, and I will see you guys in the next video. I rely solely on word of mouth, and the recommended algorithms are not recommending any of my videos or films anymore. My channel has literally been completely restricted, so I rely on your help by sharing my work around if you appreciate it, and uh, leave me your comments. I definitely want to know what you have to share and what you have to think about all of this stuff, and I will see you in the next video.